hello, my name's Ed, welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to be looking at one of those questions that people always ask me, which is, is it worth shooting film anymore? Why would you do it when everything's digital? I've dug out my old Yashica Electro 35, which is my favourite 35mm camera, and I'm going to see if I can restore it to usable condition, put some film in it, go out and shoot that film, and then develop it. And as I go along, I'll try and answer those questions for you and also to an extent for me, because I've forgotten why haven't I been shooting film? This was my go-to camera for many, many years. And it's a rangefinder. It's uh, an aperture priority camera. So if you set the aperture using this dial here, then the camera will try to select a suitable shutter speed for you. And that's assuming that it has a battery in it. If there's no battery, which there is no battery in this at the moment because the one that was inside it was completely dead, uh, it will just pick its set shutter speed, which is 1 60th of a second. So there we've got one thing that's better than digital already, which is that if your battery goes, it will still work. However, it will still work in a very limited way. So to get the camera working to its full potential, what we need to do is get a battery in here. Now, the battery fits in here and Originally, you would use a six volt mercury battery. However, it is illegal to sell those nowadays. And so we have to improvise. Even when I was using this camera 10 years ago, you couldn't get the mercury batteries. So the best thing is a 5.5 volt alkaline battery. The half a volt doesn't seem to make much of a difference. But the problem with this is it's actually shorter than the old six volt batteries. And so it won't make a connection with the base plate here as it is. So what you have to do, first of all, make sure you've got the positive end facing the right way. But then I've got a piece of wire wool that I've scrunched up into a ball. And if I pop that in, that should be enough to make a connection when the base plate is reattached. So let's give that a go. I can just screw that on. Good use for an old uh, crush washer from a motorbike there. Fits perfectly. So if we turn this over now and unlock the shutter, if you just watch here, which is where the number of exposures you have remaining is written, if I press the battery test button, can you see that? It's now lighting up, which shows that we have a working battery. And that means that now we have access to the auto exposure. So it will get the correct shutter speed for the aperture that you set if possible. And if it isn't possible, these lights here, if I wind on, it only works if it's wound on. Can you see that the red light's going on, say, that it's too bright for it to find a good shutter speed? So if we take it all the other way, now it's saying, oh yes, there's not enough light for us to work with. So we have to be somewhere in the middle and there we have no problems. So the camera could select the shutter speed. What we now need to do is pop some film in it. And what I'm gonna do is use a 400 speed black and white film. You have to set the film speed on the camera here. Uh, it's actually already set to 400 because I usually use 400 film because it's a good all-rounder for day and indoor photography. Uh, black and white, you don't have to worry about the color balance of your film, which is one good reason to use it. And the other is I'm gonna try and develop this myself and uh, color developing is really difficult and requires different chemicals. So black and white is the way to go. And uh, I bought some, if I just pop this down here, Ilford HP5 Plus, which is the same brand as the chemicals that I use for developing. So probably doesn't make any difference, but if I'm using Ilford chemicals and Ilford film, that should work. Uh, it's a 36 exposure film. It costs about 10 pounds and uh, used by 2026. And it, yeah, ISO 400, ISO and ASA are mean the same thing. It's interchangeable. 
I miss these little film boxes. It's kind of a lovely thing to open one of these up and uh, get your film out and feel like, oh, some magic's going to happen here. It's not the same as sticking a memory card in, um, but it is a lot more expensive. Uh, so, should we crack on? Often on the inside of the box, you'll get some developing instructions. Yeah, there we go. So, if you can see, there we go, inside the box. Instructions on developing. So I will keep the box for afterwards in case we need those instructions. So there you go, the film comes in these lovely little dark plastic canisters because they have to be protected from the sunlight. It's usually best to try and load this in fairly low light, even though it is protected inside by the canister that the film is actually spooled onto. So what we can do is look at how you load the film, because I know some people weren't actually loading film. Um, it's a long time since I did. So this is the film rewind knob. So when you've used the whole reel of film, you use that to rewind it back into the um, cartridge and remove it. But to put the film in, you pull this up and the back of the camera pops open. And if we open that up, you can see inside the hole there is where the lens is at the other side. So that's where the frame of film will be when it's exposed to the light to make a picture. That's where the film cartridge or canister goes in. And that is where it's wound onto by the mechanism. So you've got to be very careful not to open the back of the camera once the film's in there because the film that's on this side is not protected by anything if the back is open. And if there are any leaks in this area as well, then you'll get fogged film. Um, when we load the film, the first bit of film will be fogged automatically. There's nothing you can do about that. So what you do is you wind on the first bit of film just to make sure that it's actually engaged with these sprockets. Because one of the worst things that can happen is that your film has not actually engaged with the sprocket. So every time you wind it on here with the winder, it's not actually going advancing, it's just sticking there and you're just exposing the same frame hundreds and hundreds of times until you work out that actually nothing's happening. So what we do is we wind on a little bit to make sure that's not the case, but then we close the lid to wind on a little bit more so that we know that when we start, we're using fresh film. And it should be that the little exposure counter here has about three clicks on it before it reaches the number one to show that you're on your first frame of film. So let's check that it is set. Uh, there's a little S in there to show you at the start of the film. So we'll put the film in, we'll wind it on to the number one, and then we can go out and actually shoot some pictures. Exciting stuff. So let's open up the back again. There we go. And I'll just put that down for a moment while I get the film out. I'll do this actually just laid out here. I wouldn't normally rest it on its lens, probably not the best thing to do, but just for this one, so I don't think it's going to do any harm. Okay, so we take the film out of the canister. And there you can see, this is what's called the leader, which is a little bit of film that's slightly curved in there so that it's not as wide as the rest of it. And there's the canister there. So that goes into, if you just look by the way, just to see that, that is a, called a DX code. And some of the more modern film cameras could read that to say what the film speed was. This is not so modern. This is a camera from the 1960s. So anyway, we drop the canister in there and we need to just lift up this binding lever just a little bit to let it in. And then it should click back and we can just twist it so it engages. And then that is locked in position. Okay. And then we pull the leader across the back of the camera here, and there should be a little slit in the other side. There you can see it's just going into that and it's engaging with these sprockets. So then as I say, we wind on just to make sure. Can you see that it's actually gone into there? And then 
before we let too much film out, we close the back so it's now light tight. And then as we wind the rest of the film on, we can see that, what number are we on there? Number one, how about that? Perfect. Let's go shoot some film.